On behalf of the class of 2013, I would like to welcome everyone to this year's graduation ceremony. The activities of tonight celebrate accomplishments of these students seated before us. The past four years have been wonderful, but it is now time to move on to the next stage of life and follow where God leads each of us. Our class verse is Proverbs chapter 16, verses 3 and 9. It says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. In, the, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. These verses mean a lot to us seniors as we are getting ready to move on to the next step of our lives. Verse 3 talks about committing to the Lord. This means that the level of commitment has to be the full 100%, not just a small amount. By fully relying on God and putting him in control of our lives, we can praise him in all that we do, whether it is school, work, sports, or relationships. Another part of the verse talks about God establishing plans. For some of us, we have no clue what is going to happen in the next three months. This thought is terrifying, but by fully relying on God, our lives will be used to glorify him and complete his purpose for us. Verse 9 says, In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Some of us may think we have our lives all planned out, from college to marriage and work. These plans can change instantaneously, and it may not be to our liking. One of us could land a dream job, but God can change that if it is not a part of his bigger plan. We can plan out our lives and our minds, but they will not always turn out as we hope, and that is life. Life is full of happiness and joy, but also full of disappointments. That is why we are blessed to have a God who loves and cares for us at all times. Now, I would like to thank all who have helped us come this far. I would first like to thank the parents for dealing with us for 18 years, for loving us, and for spending the extra money to send us to this great school. Next, I would like to thank all of our different churches. While our Christian schooling during the week and church on the weekend, we have learned to view the world with a Christian perspective and have learned how to treat others and respond to different situations in life. I would now like to thank all of the staff at this school. Over the four years we have been here, you have spent all extra hours teaching and explaining to us things we didn't understand. Above all, you incorporated Christianity into every subject, from science to math and even to gym. Thank you for the biblical worldview that we can now use as we go off on our own. It is tough trying to fit in the world, and that is why God does not want us to become a part of it. He gave each and every one of us our own special gifts. Some are good at art, some at math, and others at caring for others. By following God's plan for our lives and using our gifts to glorify him, we can have a positive Christian impact in the world around us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you have given us, that we can gather here in celebration of the seniors and the work they did to accomplish high school graduation. We pray that as we go our separate ways, you will give us the guidance we need so that in everything we do, we give you all of the glory. Thank you for our parents, our churches, our school, and the gifts you gave each of us. We give you all of the glory tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Seniors, on behalf of the junior class, I would like to congratulate you on your achievement this far. Tonight we can celebrate your life success to this point. Your class has shown excellence in many areas and I'm sure you'll continue to do that in the future. Although we celebrate the past tonight, I want you to consider your future. Most of you have been influenced by Christian schools almost your entire life. You have had parents, teachers, coaches that you have depended on all the way whether you wanted them to or not. From this point forward, many of you will be on your own with your own decisions to make. Christian schools have instilled a foundation that you will always build yourself upon. As you leave our small Christian community, you will have the opportunity to be a light to those around you. No matter where you go to school or what you choose to do after high school, you will be confronted with many challenges. Ephesians 3, 16 through 18 says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp, grasp how wide, how long, how deep is the love of Christ. We have been taught how to learn and lead with Christ as our focus. 
I hope that you continue what you have done and accomplished here at SECHS and whatever you do in the future. Find Christian friends and continue leading for the glory of God. Be a light to those who do not know the Lord. And again, congratulations, and the juniors and I wish you the best in your future. Dear class of, class of 2013, friends, family, faculty, staff, and board members, well, here it is, graduation day, a day that we've all been looking forward to for a long time. Some of us have even been counting down the days left of school since we were sophomores. Jared, I think you were the one who did that. <laughs> However, a day such as this also allows us the opportunity to look back. I remember that first day of school with Mrs. Tenhoor. I reflect on the friends who started that very first day with me and are here still tonight. Vanessa, Grant, Andy, BJ, Alex, also known as Lexi, Lexi Lee, Alexandria, and even Queen, according to your mom. I never quite understood it, but Alex, you always enjoyed changing your name on us. I also remember friends who moved or chose other schools. I think of how Oostburg Christian was always known as our biggest rival. One of our main goals was to beat OCS at any sporting event. I don't know exactly when this all changed, but those same rivals eventually became our very close friends when we all joined forces as one class. Instead of wanting to beat OCS, we all agreed and changed our focus to beat the Flying Dutchman and women of Oostburg. I think back to all the wonderful teachers and administrators that I have had the privilege of knowing. I attribute my love of math to Mrs. Leo, who explained how math surrounds us everywhere and every day. I know that my love of science came from Mr. Van Drunen. Who can ever forget when Mr. Van Drunen jumped on the table to grab our attention? Mr. Van Drunen also taught his students how to live for the Lord in everything we do. Mr. Van Drunen, you are still my role model today. Thinking way back to grade school, I remember Mrs. Andringa and her love for reading. I also remember Mrs. Andringa's funny sense of humor and her go-with-the-flow attitude. Any one of us would be mortified to show up for school or work wearing, with two different shoes on, but not Mrs. Andringa. <laughs> I also had the privilege of, know, of having Mr. Navis as my fourth grade teacher and later our principal. Mr. Navis, thank you for all you've done to help us along the way. You never hesitated, you never gave up hope on any of us, and you realized that every journey begins with a single step. We all want to wish you and your family God's blessings in your next journey. High school was no different. The teachers and staff here at SECHS have all been exceptional. Mr. Gesh, I'll miss all of your family tree stories. I've come to realize that quite possibly every member of this class is related to each other, somehow. <laughs> Mr. Bolkema, you further enhance my love of math, and I'll never forget cramming into your car for the Lakeland College math meet. Mr. Decker, we will all miss your deep voice that we all tried so hard to imitate. <laughs> Mr. Endringa, well, what can I say? You always wore matching shoes. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Mrs. Van Domlin for her work with the AFS program and all of those families who accepted foreign exchange students into their homes and lives. Throughout high school, we've all been blessed with many wonderful students from foreign lands who shared their culture with us. These are lasting friendships and experiences that we will never forget, and through Facebook, it never seems like we're that far away. This is the last time that we, as a class, will be together. This next step in our lives can be a scary one as we leave the support structure of SECHS. While reading my Bible recently, Joshua 1.9 caught my attention. Joshua writes, Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. One thing that I know about the SECHS class of 2013 is that we never back down from a challenge. We may not always win our games against Oostburg, but we never give up. I don't know if it's our strong Dutch-German heritage or what it is, but we are a determined bunch. Certainly, life will throw us curveballs. We have our strong biblical teaching, our strong foundation based upon his teaching that will help us weather any storm. I'm not sure how we will get to where we need to be. 
how we will achieve our dreams, but I do know that we will know how to do it and we won't give up, and that's the important thing. We all have unique paths that the Lord is leading us to. Some will go into the workforce, the military, technical school, or college, but we will forever share one common theme, the one thing that binds us together forever, wherever we go, and that's our Christian faith. I'd like to take this moment to thank my parents. I know that it wasn't easy sending me to Christian schools. I know that you've sacrificed a lot for me, and for that, I'm extremely grateful. My parents, like all of your parents, Realize the importance of Christian education. Fancy cars will rust. Homes are subject to fire or flood. Money can be lost, stolen, or taxed, but no one can ever take away our Christian education. We've all grown through these formidable years. Some have dealt with job or family loss or family member illness. Whatever challenges we faced or are going to face, we have the knowledge that God will never leave us or forsake us. He's right beside us, gently guiding our path. May you have every success on your unique path. May you work hard. May you hold your head high. May our paths still cross from time to time. And may you go with all your heart. It's an excellent testimony uh, to this school and to the dedication of the parents and supporters of this school after students um, just introduce our ceremony that way with those, those uh, beautiful speeches. Um, every year at Christian High, our school culture um, is infused with other cultures through the program of AFS, and this year was no different. Uh, we had the pleasure, in fact the privilege, to have uh, two AFS students this year, uh, Nathaniel Cooper from Liberia and Lucas Neves from Brazil. These are two class act individuals and they, they have been fun to be around. Uh, I invite them up now to uh, share some of their stories with us. Bring you greetings from my family back home. They are very happy for me to be with you guys and they say thanks very much. School board, principals, members of the teaching staff, school's administration, parents, AFS representative, <coughs> Graduating class, students, friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I'm very grateful to God for giving me life today because we have thousands of people out there or thousands of people couldn't have life today. And to the organizers of this program for giving me the time and the opportunity to be part of it. Thank you very much. Just to share my experience with you, when I was in Liberia, I have dreamed about coming to the US. And it was one morning doing an exam at the end of 2011. We got an announcement about coming to the U.S. to study for a one-year program. So that day, I went home and I told my mother about it. She, being a very great woman, she encouraged me. She said, "Apply." And I just kind of had a feeling that my long awaited dream to visit the U.S. has arrived. It was a challenge. So I decided to apply because I want to experience other part of the world. I want to experience America people talk about. 
I want to experience the life of America. I want to experience the government, the historic. What is the historic beyond America? So when I decided to apply, I was selected from my school, along with 100 students from our city. And we were selected to do a test called secondary level English proficiency test. This test consisted of oral, where you have to listen to tip, and you answer questions, and comprehension, and essay writing. So after the test, I was the only student so separate from my school. I joined students from other high schools. We take our challenge to another level. At this time, we had a series of interviews. We had representation from our government, representation from the American Embassy, and representation from the AFS YES program. So we went through all these interviews, writing essays, talking to people to prove we are direct representation of our country. At the end again, being guided by the Holy Spirit of the Lord, I was selected. Not because I'm good, I'm the coolest kid, I know everything, but because of God, I was selected. Along with five other students, from different high schools, and we decided to take on this journey for 10 months. Coming to America, I feel like I should go beyond my comfort zone. I should go out of the area. I come from school. I hang out with friends. This is not bad for me. I can ask my parents for data and sin. And I'm having a good time, but I feel I should go somewhere where it is new to me and I will experience more. But after my decision, after my decision, I also had a belief that even though America is a developed country, but it is not safe. That was a stepping stone for me. It didn't stop me. Said, Since America is not safe, stay right here. It makes me to say, go and experience how it's like. And I thought it was not safe because watching a, or watching an American movie back in Liberia, you see the guys in club shooting guns. <laughs> yeah. So I just felt the environment was not safe. But coming to America and spending 10 months changed everything. It changed a lot of things about me. And I learned a lot about America. I learned about the day-to-day -day activities of Americans. I learned about the history. I learned about the government. And the most important thing, the respect and appreciation for diversity. That I thought was very important. You don't see that everywhere in the world today. Even for my country, people don't see you along the road facing problems and want to stop for you. So I thought it was important. And I also learned a lot more that I can take to Liberia Today, when I get in Liberia, I can impact the lives of others. We have an AFS saying that says, a mind that has been stretched never returned to its original shape. You might say, what, what that means? Yeah. But in a true sense, that is from my experience. I was like this, and Getting to know more people, doing a lot of stuff, my mind became like this. And to come back like this, um, it is not just possible in a day. So going back home is like 
starting another new experience. But at this time, you have advantage. You have advantage to impact the lives of others. And one thing about this experience, it changed my understanding of things. It changed my understanding of religion. It changed the way I perceive people and the knowledge I acquire in a short period of time. It's remarkable. And coming to Christian Hyde, I had a chance to play on a soccer and basketball team and also being part of the drama team. We had a great time together. We had some rock and roll, yeah. <laughs> but it was a new involvement for me because back home, I come from school and I have more time. I go to the YMCA, I hang out with friends. We have our own little radio station. I can talk on it and people hear me around, friends know me. I don't have to play sport before people know me. Yeah, so coming to the school and getting involved in sports, it makes me to know people more every day. And it makes me to have good times with them. And I also had great times with families and friends. It was amazing. Back home, I heard people talking about snow. Yeah, I read about snow in book. Yeah, but coming to America to experience snow, to play in the snow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's like the most valuable thing, just to experience snow. Because it's like different thing from your planet. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. And I also had a lot of great memories with friends. And I'd just like to take this time to share some of them with you. When I want to explain everything, we might sleep here tonight. So we might just leave me then. The first one was our senior retreat. It's like planning a senior retreat at the beginning of the school. Nothing good than that. Because it got me to know everyone and it makes me to have some of the good experience for the first time. Like water skiing, zip lining, rock climbing, horseback riding, back home. I didn't do these things, but coming to experience them, it was great for me. And I just want to share this one with you. Maybe some of you have heard about it. It was once I had a time with AFF friends. We went skiing. Yeah, maybe some of you have heard about it. So. Some of you guys from Norway, from Germany, and pretty much they have snow. Yeah, they have snow, they have experienced these things. And I didn't know we are friends, but for that side, we are not the same. Yeah, so I one of these guys, we learned how to ski it for a little bit. I have confidence in myself that I can do it. So I saw the guys, getting on a bucket to go to another level while skiing. <laughs> I joined them, we went. The first introduction to get out of the bucket, I fell. <laughs> yeah, so I got up. I thought it was just a mistake so I can make it, yeah. But when I look at the hill, I gotta come down the hill before going home. Yeah, but how can I get down if I don't know how to ski? I stood up like this, trying to balance myself. Yeah, 
I battled with myself and I stood for long. The guys went down the first time. They couldn't see me in a group, so they knew something went wrong. They came back and decided to ask me what's wrong. Um, <laughs> I paused a little bit and I said, um, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying. So they encouraged me to do it. And if I couldn't do it, I couldn't come down. Yeah, I could stay up. There's no other means you can come down. You have to ski to come down. I took the rest because I got I to gotta get home. <laughs> when I came down, <clears throat> like it for me, <clears throat> I fell at the end. Yeah. So I said that was cool. It's not too bad. Yeah. No pain. I got up again. And this time around, I went on the bucket again. Yeah. I came down. I tried to get a break because it was my first time. I couldn't get a break. But at this time, I didn't fall. I kept going. Like I was supposed to stop here, I went to the NPR. <laughs> yeah. And I stopped there. So from then on, I tried to help myself. And I did it twice or more than three times. I got used to it. And I thought it was a memory that I can't forget about. It was cool. I want to use this time to say thank you to everyone. You guys are great. I can just, I can, I can believe it. I can believe it how you guys have the time because of God to talk to me, to accept me in your school. I want to use this opportunity to just recognize few people to the Kelly's family. I want to say thanks <coughs> for opening your home to me. You treated me as one of your own. <coughs> it was great of you. And to you, Caleb and Kobe, <coughs> I just want to say thanks. You guys are great. We had a lot of good times together. Thank you. I also want to Look at the Hendrix. <clears throat> Thank you very much again for opening your home to me. And you are always there for me. Thank you. To all our good teachers, seriously, it was good that I came to America because the teachers and students' relationship is 100% different from a country. And you guys do a great job with students. Thank you. Just to recognize few teachers. To you, Mr. Gash. Your short stories like Rachel Corey. Yeah. All these stories when I read them, I was like in this direction, and it turned me like this. I don't know why it happened, but those stories, if you read them, it sent a different signal to your mind. It makes you to think different. Thank you very much. To you, Mr. VDV, I saw you. <coughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Getting part of your classes second semester. It was a giant step for me. I think you remember my first presentation and you told me about it. And when I entered this class this first day, I learned a lot from his talking. And I knew I could use him to move to another level. And with all his fun, his teaching is Christ centered. Thank you, Mr. Venable. And I could call all the teachers and list all the great things about you guys. But you guys are great. Yeah. To our AFS volunteers, in the school and out of the school, I can't believe you guys do all the things free. If you ask them, how much do you make a month? They tell you nothing. Yeah. 
And I'm kind of bored to ask some of them, how much do you make with AFS? They tell you nothing. Yeah. And they do all the great things. You were there every time to make sure everything went right with me. To you, Cindy, I don't know if she's here. I just want you to recognize her. She's a great lady, and she's there for students. To you, Mr. Andre Guy. To you, Mr. Hendricks. All of you work with students in the school. Talk to them and make sure everything is well. To our parents. Well, I go play soccer, I go play basketball, and all the people just clapping for me. Yeah, all the parents just keep clapping for me. Thank you very much. Some of them, I don't know if I can recognize them, but they take pictures for me, and they send them to me. You guys did a very good job. And to you, the photographer of the year, Mrs. Eva. She did a great job for me, and when I'm doing a book, a photo book, she got to get a recognition in the book because she did a lot of great pictures for me. Thank you. To our coaches, I can see Coach Mark there. Yeah, he's smiling. I can see Coach Dagger and all the other people. You guys brought a Christian discipline in sports. Even though we had some rough time, as I said earlier, but you guys turned with a Christian's perspective, telling us things will be fine. Thank you, Coach Philipsy. And to our drama director, Mrs. Rasketer. Where is she? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> she is a fabulous lady. I don't know if that's a good word to use, but she's fabulous. She was a director and a friend to me. Every time we meet after practice, she tells me one of two great words. I just rest in my heart and I feel it was okay. Things was fine. Thank you, Mrs. Raskin there. And lastly, to our awesome student body. You guys are amazing. To those of you who are concerned, speaking to me down the hall, calling my name, or just looking at me, you made an impact in my life. Give me rise here and there. Thank you. Before I take my seat, I know I'm a little bit boring, but I would like to remind you that a change program is a life in a year, and not a year in a life. It's like a big life you experience within a year time, instead of just one year in your life. And to our parents again, we want you to consider opening your homes to that poor exchange student. You make their life complete. You make them experience different things. You don't believe it because you are in America. But coming from up there and experiencing this is different. So please open your homes to our exchange students. And you also have the opportunity to learn about the culture, to learn about the country, and to our students. I can say I've been to a lot of countries in West Africa and America and Germany. America is too small to limit you. This world is too small to limit you to America. You got to grab the opportunity. Someone said, go on an exchange program. He said, I don't want to go on an exchange program. I'm satisfied with my home. But take the challenge. Get out there. Grab the opportunities, get that great moment, and experience all of part of our global village. It is awesome. Have a nice day. I love you all, but Christ loves you the best.
Hey guys, I don't think I can speak in English right now. I'm gonna try. This might seem a little silly, but it, it is true. My exchange program was, in a sense, like I was being born again. I got to learn how to talk. Yep, I still learn. I gotta know my new family, those who were always here for me. I gotta make new friends that will laugh at my accent and ask nonsense questions about what we have in Brazil and not. <laughs> I gotta find new hobbies and find out that the bears are not cool at all. Packers! <laughs> And I even got to learn how to walk again. Do you know how hard it is to walk in Sheboygan when the, the streets are covered with ice? <laughs> it's really hard. But I found out that there is no problem if you fall and break your thumb <laughs> and pop your ankle <laughs> and fracture your, fracture your eye <laughs> because there will always be someone there to lift you up and put you back on track. So I just want to thank you all those who gave me a little hand, a word of encouragement, even without knowing it. I want you to thank the Christian High School for helping me to find a way, and all teachers and school clerk that helped me along the year, especially Mr. Decker and Mr. Gash that put up with me in more than one class and showed me another side of the U.S. I want to thank you, the AFS group that guided me and helped me the, to make the most out of the, this exchange program, especially Sandy and Sharon, and their families that provided me great moments here. Thank you very much. And I also want to thank my soccer coach, Dr. Phillips, and my jiu-jitsu master, Jeff, who gave a pinch of Brazil to my ear. And finally, my family. I, I don't even know how to start. They are responsible for the greatest changes that happened during this, this year. Without them, I would not be able to get through all those depressive winter mornings. <laughs> I would not realize how big an American heart could be. I would not m break so many stereotypes and think that the world is much bigger than just Brazil. I would never thought that we could get along so well as we did to really feel at home so far away from my tiny little town. I want you to thank, for this, thank them for this wonderful year. My mom, Karen, for her love, help, and great laughs together. My dad, Carl, for a huge patience, life-changing lessons, and more patience. <laughs> my brothers, Grant and Garrett, for accepting me so well as part of the family and for some memories that I will never forget. For all the relatives that treated me as, part, as I was part of the family for years. And also thank to all those I should say here but I didn't, can't mention because of lack of time. So thank you all guys. seniors. It is uh, my amazing privilege to stand before you and many of you I have uh, stood before it one way or another uh, for years and years. Some of you from the time you were in twos and threes at our church, Drew before that. <laughs> and to see you ha gr have grown to this point to be adults to be ready to face uh, this world, to be ready to be launched, whether we're ready to launch you or not, is an inc incredible privilege. So I truly thank God for the opportunity. You will hear many of your classmates and, and others who uh, have people address them over the course of the next days and weeks at this graduation season who say things like, it's time to be independent. 
It's time to, to grow up. It's time to set your heart on dreams. You can put, as you have dreams in your heart, you can accomplish anything that you put your heart and mind to. YOLO. <laughs> Be young and have fun. All of those messages to high school graduates have a place and a time. All of them struggle because they, they mingle in error with truth. And graduates, as you face this moment, I want you to know you cannot do anything you set your mind to. It's just not true. I don't think any one of you is going to be a professional baseball player. I don't think any one of you is, and we can make a list of things that, that maybe none of you will be able to do. Francis, I love you. If you set your heart to play in the NBA, it's just not going to happen, my friend. Okay? <laughs> you can't do anything you want to do. And I do not want you to leave this place and tell yourself, whatever I want to do with my life can happen if I just believe in it enough and if I just try hard enough. It's not true. But as we have heard the Bible open to us and we've heard your life verse, we can hear what is true and we can hear what is possible as you seniors, you graduates, give your life over to Christ. The verse that was read for us, by the way, we could just probably listen to what Andy said and I could just cut these short and we could just move on, but I'm going to go ahead and take a few more minutes, all right, if you don't mind. The, the senior class verse, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Your plans will succeed. In the heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. The first part of that in Proverbs chapter uh, 16 says that uh, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Graduates, commit to the Lord. It carries with it a lot of weight. All right? This concept is to relinquish control of your life, to render to the Lord to relinquish everything, to entrust yourself to him. If you're not careful, you could read these words and you could make yourself believe that if you just pray a prayer, that is, say out loud in your bedroom tonight, Lord, you have full control of my life, right? And then you walk away and live how you want to live, you could make yourself believe that God owes you something. That because you prayed some prayer and said, okay, I'm going to honor the Lord with, with my life, uh, that now the Lord owes you happiness, comfort, peace, money. The Lord owes you some kind of amazing life. That's not what this passage says. The Lord doesn't owe me anything, and he doesn't owe you anything either. But here's what it does say. To relinquish control of your life is success. To give up your way, your desire, your dream, and when your dream becomes God's dream for your life, that's success. That's what we want for you. Listen, across this nation, people will graduate and people will pursue academics. Pursue your academics as far as the Lord leads you. Go do it. All right? We want to see amazing, amazing results through your academic achievements. But guys, there are some things that you cannot commit to the Lord. Did you know that? Some things you cannot commit to the Lord. If you have rebellion in your heart and you hear the voice of the Lord telling you to follow after him and you refuse, you can't commit that to the Lord. That's not entrusting your life to the Lord. That's saying, I relinquish control of my life, but I'm going to do what I want to do. And families, as we sit here surrounding these amazing graduates, we are here to announce to them that relinquishing control of our life was the best thing that we've ever done. Here's another thing, though, you can't commit to the Lord. Disobedience. Samson found that out. He talked about following the Lord. He said the words about following the Lord, but you know what he did? He did what he wanted to do with his life. He didn't commit his way to the Lord. And students, we are here today to tell you that committing your life, relinquishing control of your life, not quite knowing what the next step of your life, it's really okay. 
Lucas stood up here, or Nathaniel stood up here and said, well, I, I don't know how I'm going to get to this, this big plan of God for my life. This verse says how you're going to get there. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. That is, relinquish control of your life and give your heart to him. Let him order your steps day by day. Now, I have heard it said that uh, it's boring to be a Christian. It's boring to follow the Lord all the way like that. You know, these uh, places of advice is be young and have fun. These are your, your college years to do with what you want. Uh, graduates, uh, I have heard it say, look, this is my time. This is my time to experience all of those things. To experience YOLO. YOLO just means for all of us who don't know, you only live once. I think you probably all were tracking with that, all right? But this concept of go grab the gusto, right, because, because life only comes once, do what pleases you. Say you want to follow the Lord because you came from a Christian school, but do what you want to do. It is not boring to follow the Lord. It is not boring to relinquish control of your life fully to him. He does not have boring plans for your life. God's dreams for you are bigger than any dreams or any desires that you have for yourself. God's dreams for you are more fulfilling than chasing any of the dreams that you have for yourself. God's dreams for you are more exciting than any of the hopes, the adrenaline that this world has to offer. God's dreams, if you will, for your life are more soul satisfying than any dreams that you can have about the way you think your life should turn out. His dreams include amazing steps of faith. His dreams are better than medical careers, although maybe a medical career is in your future. His dreams are better than uh, cars and paid off mortgages, though maybe that's in your future, we hope so. His, his dreams are better than that. God's plan for your life has to do with changing this world as you relinquish control. Guys, in the Garden of Eden, God gave uh, Adam and Eve the perfect environment to live in, and we messed it up, and we have inherited that rebellion. We walk away from God every chance we get. God's dream for your life is to restore the relationship so that you can walk for a vapor, just a vapor with him. So I asked a bunch of you, uh, all of you actually, I think, uh, what, what is your dream? What is, what is your success? What is your definition of success in your life? I'm not going to read them all. Alex Abel, she's first alphabetically, and I got her response. Uh, so success is salvation. Everything else is just God's graciousness manifested. Nathaniel Cooper, success is when I accomplish what the Lord has called me to do. I'll just pick out one more. Emma Markham, my, uh, person, my personal great life goal is to use my God-given talents to glorify him and touch other people with my gifts. I love connecting with others and I hope to use my future career as a pathway into others' lives in a positive and memorable way. I could go on and on. You have definitions of success and that's great. Proverbs definition of success is restoring a relationship with God and then walking in that relationship for life. Listen, guys, if statistics bear it out, you're going to change careers four or five times. You're going to change majors two or three times. That's what statistics say. I celebrate where you're at. I celebrate what you're going to do going on to the next step. And I hope that many of you are on the path that is the path that you wind up realizing. That is that you're studying right now what you're going to study for life. That would be great if that's the case. But if those dreams change and if those things change, God has a, a better and a bigger and a more beautiful plan as you entrust your future to him. Here's the greatest plan. It, think about it. Garden of Eden. What is, what is God's plan for Adam and Eve? And he says, listen, I bring the man, I bring the woman to the man. I want you to uh, oversee this created world I made and I want you to be fruitful and multiply. That's a great dream. It is a great dream. I stand here before high school graduates, boys and girls, and telling you it, your great dream should be that when you get to the end of your life, you're surrounded by a group of people that you have pledged your life to, that you have raised children and you've been faithful to one person for life because that is God's intention. 
I don't know all of God's will for you, class of 2013, but this I do know, God's will is for your sanctification. That is, that if, if we could write in one sentence what is success in your life, it is you becoming more like Jesus every day of your life from this day until the day you go to be with him. That would be success. And some of you will be painters, and some of you will be singers, and some of you will be biomedical engineers. I've got to look that up. All right? Some of you will, do, will have those careers you set out to, and that's great. But God cares a lot less about your career than he does about your character. At Christian High, we want to send academics out. We want to send smart people out. We want to send passionate people out. We want to send Christ followers out who give up any hold on their life and say, look, I'm just going to commit my way to you, Lord. As you commit your life to the Lord, we're going to close in, in just a moment, okay? The Lord determines your steps. Andy's touched on this. You know, we've got a dream and we're, we're setting out with the Lord and we want to obey him and please him. And the Lord sends amazing hiccups in our way that we never planned for. Life struggles that, that are hard and that we didn't see coming. And we told ourselves, if I commit myself to the Lord, he will make me successful. And my definition of success, and we've got it written out about money and, and health and, and happiness and comfort. Daniel set out to follow the Lord, and he set out to follow the Lord within the context of his family and his friends. And the Lord brought trouble. And a foreign king came in and took him away from his family. You're about to go away from your families, many of you, whether to the workforce or to the military or to, high school or to college. And by force, Daniel was removed from his home, guys, in Daniel chapter 1. And he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself as he went away. Here's some things that are true about Daniel. His big group of friends became very small very fast. If you go to college and try to adopt a little Jesus with your dream saying, be young and have fun, and you go for the purpose of excitement and fun, I am telling you worlds will collide when you get there. Because you cannot have the, world, the, the life that the world is promising you and Jesus at the same time. You can't. Daniel had, had to, he, he, could have, he could have went and had the life that the world had for him. As Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, listen, do what I want you to do. I'll give you everything. I'll give you anything. It's all for you. You are the best and the brightest. And guys, you are the best and the brightest. Daniel purposed in his heart he was not going to defile himself. And his friend group got small. And his Friday nights got very, very lonely. In fact, he was all by himself. He purposed in his heart that he was going to follow God. God brought a friend, three friends, who would stand with him. And God's dreams for Daniel was not that he would have fun and connect with the Nebuchadnezzar guys and the, and the Chaldeans and the folks around. He, no, it, it was not about that. God's dream for Daniel's life was that he would go into this foreign land and stand up for his name and the name of God was announced around the globe because Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That's success. His career, cha his career uh, plans changed. His family relationships that he thought would always be intact and he thought he would always have these happy little dreams and he thought it would always be cool changed. His thoughts about what success is changed. But the big picture never changed. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And God used his life from that day to this day to inspire you and to inspire me. Guys, as we uh, are about to watch you walk across the stage and enjoy this graduation and, and watching you and celebrating with you, I know it's been a long time. I apologize for that. We are with you. We are proud of you. We do not want you to be torn from our arms and brought to a foreign place and, and forced to serve foreign gods. And if that happens somehow, some way, 
We would want you to devote yourself to the Lord. Follow him one step at a, at a time. Even if your Friday nights get lonely, and even if your friend group gets tiny, and even if there's only one or two other people that will serve the Lord with you. We bless you. You have blessed us in amazing ways as we watch you grow up. This world will be changed, not because you're medical doctors, not because you are a therapist, not because you're social workers, all those things are great, but because you commit yourself to the Lord's plan for your life, you raise godly kids, and you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus with everything you got, even if a career changes, and even if your major changes. We love you. Go with God. Board President Black, would you join me up here to hand out some diplomas? Alexandria Lee Abel. <laughs> Jennifer Mary Anderson. <laughs> Patrick Royal. Bolden. Benjamin Jacob Broxma. Nathaniel Zinna Cooper. Samantha Ann Cornish. <laughs> Ethan Brock DeMaster. Jared John Vanderwill Denning. Andrew Stephen Domus. Caitlin Rochelle Flipsy. Amanda Sue Her. Garrett William Klumpenauer. Grant Michael Klotzbeaker. Andrew Benjamin Kerber. <laughs> Sean Lee Langraff. <laughs> Vanessa 
Ann Lurier. Andrew Jackson McDonald. Emma Kate Markham. Olivia Yannette Mock. Joshua Levi Mulbrook. Lucas Lobo Alcantara Nevis. Cassandra Joy Ringel. Deanna Lynn Rakowskis. Cherith Brooke Tao. Richard J. Walvert. Francis Marie Windsor.
come to you now humbled again at your presence in this school. For over 40 years, you have helped mold students into young adults because of your love and grace. It's not any different for these young people that are starting a new chapter in their journey that you have prepared for them. Father, some are going to college, trade schools, the workforce, or service to our country. Others will be headed back to their respective countries to do the same. Whatever they're calling, Father, help them, and re help them to realize that it is ever in their, through prayer and your guidance along the way. Father, bless them and keep them in your care. Father, thank you for the parents that choose to send their children to Christian High. Father, as sinners and as parents, we realize that our children need to have a view of the world that is biblical in all things. That our children need to see your glory. And not just what we learn in church, but in science, math, literature, all studies, and yes, Father, even art. Father, we thank you for the staff. They truly are unbelievable. Thank you for their faith, their leadership, and their patience. Continue to bless them, Father, and work in their and in their lives. And last, uh, Father, we, we ask you to be with Again, with, with Sheboygan County Christian High School, and continue to bless, bless the school and bless everything about it. And Father, we ask you to be with those that are moving away from us, be with the Navas family and the Walshes as they start a new chapter in their life. Father, continue to bless them as well. And it's in your son's precious name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 